I'm not scared of zombies. I mean, he seems pretty tame actually, but I wouldn't want them to roam around my body either. Tiny zombies all over the place doesn't sound so good. Zombie cells are also called senescent cells or the other way around. Senescent cells make us age faster, a lot faster. First, I will talk about what they are. I'll make this quick. Then what causes them. I will try to make this quick also. And then we'll focus on how we can prevent and get rid of these senescent cells. So what are senescent cells? The reason why they are often also called zombie cells is because they're not really dead, but they're not really alive either. To understand senescent cells, it's nice to know that their original intent isn't to hurt us. Unfortunately, as we age, our repair mechanisms start to break down. So when cells become damaged, they are supposed to repair themselves, right? They have mechanisms for that. But as this process breaks down due to aging, some cells become irreparably damaged. And so what happens is that the cell dies, but it dies in a controlled manner. So nothing happens to the cells around it. This is one of our body's self-protective mechanisms and it's called apoptosis. It's the body's way of removing damaged, old or unnecessary cells without causing harm to surrounding tissues. This process is crucial for maintaining health and preventing disease. But sometimes, and this increases as we age, the cell is unable to undergo apoptosis and then it enters senescence as a sort of safety net to avoid uncontrolled proliferation, which could lead to things we don't want, including cancer. So our body is trying to protect us. But as you will see, too much of a good thing is bad, very bad. Let's dive in a bit further. Both apoptosis and cellular senescence have the same triggers. The cell decides between apoptosis or senescence based on the extent of the damage and its context. An accumulation of senescent cells, which avoid apoptosis, contributes to tissue dysfunction, aging, and chronic inflammation. Because these zombie cells emit a toxic mix of various molecules that can accelerate aging in lots of ways. This can promote age-related diseases such as arthritis, cardiovascular disease, and cancer. And conditions like Alzheimer's, liver fibrosis, and heart disease can be significantly worsened by the increased inflammation that comes from these senescent cells. Here are the factors which can induce cellular senescence. Damage to DNA. This can happen in various ways. Exposure to toxins, UV radiation, but also chronic inflammation, for example. Two, decrease in sirtuin levels. Sirtuins are proteins that play a crucial role in regulating cellular health, aging, and the development of senescent cells. They act as longevity regulators by influencing processes like DNA repair, inflammation, metabolism, and also cellular stress and resistance. And our levels of these sirtuins decline as we age, which is a major bummer. But there are things we can do. We'll get to that in the next chapter. Number three, mitochondrial damage or dysfunction is another factor which can induce cellular senescence. Mitochondria are tiny parts of cells that make energy to keep the body working, put very simply. Some reasons for damage or dysfunction can be poor diet and lack of nutrients like for not getting enough B vitamins, antioxidants, and minerals. Also exposure to toxins such as heavy metals and pesticides are a biggie, but also aging. Yep. Mitochondrial dysfunction is a hallmark of aging, contributing to reduced energy production and cellular damage. Oxidative stress is next. Oxidative stress occurs when there's an imbalance between harmful molecules called free radicals and the body's ability to neutralize them with antioxidants. So these free radicals can damage DNA, proteins, and cell structures leading to cellular dysfunction. And over time, this damage can trigger cellular senescence. And then last but not least, the leading cause of cellular senescence seems to be the erosion or shortening of telomeres. Telomeres are the protective caps at the ends of DNA strands that prevent damage during cell division. DNA, of course, is the molecule that carries genetic instructions for building and maintaining all living things, right? And telomeres act as the protective caps at the ends, 
preventing chromosomes from fraying or fusing with one another. With every cell division, telomeres shorten because DNA replication machinery cannot fully replicate the ends of linear DNA strands and this is called the end replication problem. And over time, as telomeres shorten with each division, they eventually reach a critical length where they can no longer protect the chromosomes. And when this happens, the cell perceives the shortened telomeres as DNA damage. This is when the cells hit the brakes and by halting cell division, senescence prevents cells with critically short telomeres from undergoing uncontrolled division, which could lead to cancer. The Hayflick limit refers to the maximum number of times a normal human cell can divide, which is typically around 40 to 60 divisions, before telomeres become critically short and the cell enters senescence. This limit is a built-in biological clock that ensures cells don't divide indefinitely, protecting against mutations and cancer. As we age, more cells reach the Hayflick limit, of course, due to cumulative telomere shortening. And this leads to the accumulation of senescent cells, contributing to aging and age-related diseases. All right, I think that was enough depressing stuff for one video. Let's not focus on the negative any longer. So what can we do? Before we get to the things we can take and do to prevent senescent cells from accumulating, I wanna take a minute, I promise, it's just a minute, to tell you about a product I have developed. It's the Phyto Hair Growth Serum. If you're dealing with thinning hair, there are some powerful ingredients in the serum that might be able to help. It is made entirely with botanical ingredients, without alcohol or fragrance. It's for men and women, and it contains powerful ingredients that improve scalp health, reduce shedding, and boost hair growth. One of the ingredients is a groundbreaking compound made from microalgae. I haven't seen any other serums out there which contain this, and that is Denzidil. Denzidil is an innovative hair care ingredient developed by a company called Algactive. And Denzidil was designed to combat hair loss, but also hair graying, which is a nice bonus, I think. It combines extracts from two microalgae species, spirulina and chlorella. Spirulina provides phycocyanin, a blue pigment that activates the NRF2 pathway, enhancing the hair's antioxidant defenses and protecting against oxidative stress. Chlorella offers xanthophils, pigments that inhibit cortisol levels and boost melatonin activity, countering the harmful effects of stress on hair follicles and promoting cellular repair. The serum also contains rosemary oil, which is a true superstar when it comes to boosting circulation to the scalp. And most rosemary serums I have tried are very oily. This one isn't. Next, the serum has ginger. Ginger contains active compounds like gingerol and singiberine, which stimulate blood flow to the scalp. Improved circulation ensures that hair follicles receive more oxygen and nutrients, and that promotes healthier and faster hair growth. Licorice root extract is another key player. It soothes the scalp and reduces buildup, creating it the perfect environment for your hair to grow. And last, to give your hair and scalp that extra boost, we've added vitamin C and vitamin A. These antioxidants help fight free radicals and support collagen production, which is essential for healthy, resilient hair. So go to philipcarner.com or click on the link in the description box or scan this code right here and find out more. And US shipping is free right now. Back to the video. What can we do to prevent senescent cells to accumulate and how can we get rid of them? First, we'll talk about drugs, then supplements, and then other things we can do to prevent senescent cells from accumulating and to remove them. There are drugs called senolytics, which are supposed to be quite effective in removing these senescent cells while leaving the rest of the body's healthy cells intact. Over 30 clinical trials have been conducted or are underway to evaluate senolytic drugs in humans. And these trials aim to assess the safety and efficacy of various senolytic agents, including combinations like desatinib and Quercetin, or quercetin, I've heard both. Quercetin, I think. In targeting senescent cells associated with age-related diseases. So disatinib and quercetin are commonly used for their senolytic effects. Quercetin, I take daily. Quercetin is a natural plant compound, a flavonoid, found in foods like apples, onions, and berries, and known for its powerful antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties. More on quercetin in a bit. 
because it's not technically a drug, but a supplement. The satinib, on the other hand, is primarily a cancer drug used to treat certain types of leukemia by blocking proteins that help cancer cells grow. And beyond its cancer applications, it is being studied for its senolytic properties, selectively eliminating senescent cells, potentially aiding in age-related disease treatments and improving our health span. But do I want to put a chemotherapy drug in my body? Not really. Of course, the dosage would be much smaller, but still, and I don't think there have been enough human studies. There are some other drugs being studied, like, which is another cancer drug. Also, there's, which is a natural compound that induces oxidative stress in senescent cells, selectively eliminating them. And I'm really interested in that one for sure. And then there are, these inhibitors are experimental drugs targeting pathways that sustain senescent cells. So really, I just don't feel comfortable experimenting with my body in this way yet. But I do take quercetin. Quercetin is a naturally occurring flavonoid found in a variety of fruits, like we said, and vegetables, onions, apples, berries, and also leafy greens. It is known for its potent antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties, which help protect cells from oxidative damage and reduce inflammation in the body. Quercetin has also gained attention for its potential other health benefits, including its ability to improve cardiovascular health, support immune function, and promote anti-aging effects by clearing senescent cells. I take it daily because apart from antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties, and these senolytic properties helping us get rid of these destructive cells, it also has an antihistamine effect. And I live in Austin, Texas, and allergies really are a year-round thing here. And quercetin really helps with that. Apart from quercetin, physetin is another plant-derived compound that targets senescent cells and has shown anti-aging effects in preclinical studies. And physetin has a ton of other benefits as well. It reduces oxidative stress by neutralizing free radicals, protecting cells from damage. Physetin also lowers inflammation by modulating key pathways, which may help in managing chronic inflammatory conditions. It supports brain health by reducing neuroinflammation, improving memory, and protecting neurons from age-related damage. And now back to zombie cells by reducing senescent cell accumulation Physetin may improve tissue function, reduce inflammation, and promote healthier aging. So I supplement with both quercetin and physetin. The recommended dosages are 500 to 1,000 milligrams of quercetin daily. I take 500 milligrams in the morning and 500 at night. But if you don't want to take a supplement, just eat more red onions and apples, citrus fruits, broccoli, uh, parsley, which is also super high in vitamin C and so good for us, and drink more green tea, which also contains quercetin. For physetin, the recommended daily dosage is 100 to 300 milligrams. The number one food source of physetin is strawberries, so I add them to my breakfast smoothie every day. If you want that recipe, get your free PDF at the link below. Other sources of physetin are apples and onions, which we just had, right? They contain a lot of quercetin as well, cucumbers and tomatoes as well. Apart from drugs and supplements, another way to prevent the accumulation of senescent cells is to avoid DNA damage. How the heck do we do that? The first thing we can do to avoid DNA damage is to minimize oxidative stress. It occurs when there's an imbalance between free radicals, which can damage DNA, and antioxidants. But how can we minimize oxidative stress? Well, we can and should consume more antioxidant-rich foods. Foods rich in vitamin C, for example, like broccoli, bell peppers, citrus fruits, vitamin E, like nuts, seeds, spinach, and polyphenols, which are found in berries, green tea, and dark chocolate. Not milk chocolate, unfortunately. And we definitely want to limit processed foods. I know it's hard, especially when we're busy and we don't have time to make our own meals, but processed and sugary foods promote inflammation like nothing else, which can damage DNA over time. Next, of course, we want to avoid smoking. Obviously, since this puts a ton of chemicals and free radicals in our bodies. We should limit alcohol as much as we can. We should also reduce exposure to UV radiation. So sunscreen, get a good sunscreen. And we should reduce exposure to toxins and carcinogens. Limit your contact with pesticides, heavy metals, and industrial chemicals. So opt for organic foods whenever possible, especially with things like apples and spinach. And drink filtered water. 
A lot of popular household products also contain harmful chemicals. Cleaning products, scented garbage bags, shampoos with harsh sulfates, and they are easy to eliminate. And then other lifestyle factors come into play as well, like exercise, sleep, managing stress. All of these will prevent DNA damage and may also slow the rate of telomere shortening. Now let's talk a bit more about sirtuins. Again, sirtuins are proteins, longevity regulators that play a crucial role in regulating cellular health, aging, and the development of senescent cells. Declining sirtuin activity with age increases the accumulation of senescent cells, contributing to tissue dysfunction and age-related diseases. Now we can boost sirtuin activity through lifestyle changes. We could restrict calories by fasting, which I have a really hard time doing, or we can exercise, which I much prefer over fasting. Because both of these, fasting, but it has to be at least 24 hours, yikes, and exercise boost autophagy. What is autophagy and how can we boost it? Autophagy is the process by which cells break down and remove damaged components to maintain cellular health and function. This sort of self-cleaning mechanism helps cells regenerate, repair damage, and remove harmful materials that can contribute to diseases or aging. Here's a cool triangle that shows the importance of autophagy as it relates to aging. We have senescent cells on one side, aging on the second, and autophagy on the third. So autophagy is a big deal. We want to trigger it as much as we can. One thing we can do is we can add spermidine to our diet. And you don't have to take an expensive spermidine supplement. I put a tablespoon of wheat germ into my breakfast smoothie every day, which is very high in spermidine. And spermidine has major benefits linked to autophagy and longevity. I actually made an entire video about spermidine. Check it out later if you want. And or we can take NAD precursors. What are NAD precursors and boosters? I've done entire videos about this, so I won't go into it too deeply, but basically the levels of NAD or nicotinamide adenine dinonucleotide decline with age due to reduced production and increased consumption by cellular processes such as DNA repair, and energy metabolism. And NAD boosters help replenish these levels, supporting cellular energy production, enhancing DNA repair, and promoting overall health and longevity. The two most common ones are nicotinamide riboside, or NR, and nicotinamide mononucleotide, or NMN. I'm sure you've heard of these before. There are precursors to NAD, which sirtuins rely on to function. Boosting NAD levels can enhance sirtuin activity. I supplement with 300 milligrams of NR or nicotinamide riboside daily. But we don't need to rely on supplements to boost autophagy, our self-cleaning mechanism. Like I already said, we can also restrict calories, meaning fasting, and, and this is the big way in which we can boost autophagy ourselves, we can exercise. So fasting on one hand triggers autophagy by depriving cells of nutrients, which signals the body to start cleaning out damaged or non-essential cellular parts. During fasting, insulin levels drop and glucagon rises, shifting the body into repair mode where autophagy is activated to recycle damaged proteins. This process is more pronounced during longer periods of fasting, so 24 hours plus, where cells begin to prioritize survival and energy conservation, promoting the removal of dysfunctional components. Combining fasting with exercise can further enhance autophagy as both mechanisms work together to improve cellular health and longevity. But I cannot imagine exercising while fasting, but some people do and some people really like it. So that was fasting. Now exercise, on the other hand, stimulates autophagy by creating stress in cells, prompting them to repair and renew themselves. During physical activity, particularly intense or endurance exercise, cells experience oxidative stress, damage to proteins, and the depletion of energy stores, which activates autophagy as a repair mechanism. As muscles work harder, they signal the body to clear out damaged or dysfunctional cellular components to maintain efficiency and protect against further damage. Regular exercise, such as strength training or high-intensity interval training, or HIT has been shown to promote autophagy processes in muscles, liver, and other tissues, contributing to overall cellular health and longevity. In my last video, I went deeper into high-intensity interval training, and I give a couple of different workout plans. So check that out next if you want. And that is it for this video. Thank you for watching. 
If you like what you saw, you can buy me a cup of coffee or check out my Fido hair serum at the link below. Take care.